Welcome to Craftopia, where you get to be the main character in an anime that has no title. Outstanding. Another great way to stay distracted in Craftopia. Set up some games for you and the crew. Maybe a racetrack, maybe a jump course, just maybe a javelin throwing contest, or hey, a game of chicken. Who's gonna explode first? Grab yourself a spear, left click hold to charge attack, and hopes and dreams. Very nice. Left click again, bring her back. I tell you what. Another dope trick in the world of Craftopia. Go to a level 4 merchant, find your gacha coins, come back, and set up your gumball machines so that the coin slots are facing each other and as close as possible. So I had to place one, jump on top, place the other after much trial and error of it tipping over. We finally got him to be touching. So now... Nope. Hey, yeah, there we go. You can get a 2 for 1. Check it out one more time. Two for one. Hell yeah, I'll take it. Something that'll be really helpful if you get started early game, create some form of a shit room. All creatures in this game drop feces. And I just keep my crocodiles and merchants together because I get Smith's feces, which is nothing special. And then we also get dangerous feces, which can be a little dangerous. <laughs> so start a shit farm, that way you can unlock the last era by the time you get there, and all the other opportunities for crafting that come along with collecting shit. When it comes to fighting, your skills and any items with the matching skill have separate cooldowns. So as you can see on my bottom hotbar on the far right zero, I have the EI slash attack skill. And then on my three, I have the Fox Mask, which also has the EI Slash attached to it. So, separate cooldowns. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> and again. There you go. When it comes to breeding, whatever animal you throw on the left side while facing it will be the animal that gets bred. Whatever creature you throw on the right side is just a reference for what level the potential creature that is born will be. So it'll find a rough average, give or take a few points. So if you have a level 1 and a level 100, you'll get somewhere around a level 50 creature. And whatever creature is on the left side is what it'll be. Left side facing it, that is. Also... Any creature that has been bred is automatically friendly and therefore automatically catchable. You do not need to weaken it at all. So as long as it's got hearts over its head, yours for the taking. Heyo! What's up, bud? That's how it's done. Another easy option for when you're breeding and don't necessarily want to set up your green mono station. Maybe it's a quick farm. We're not quite there yet. You can use Arch Heal or resurrection to heal all friendlies in the area. So you can heal what's ever on the breeder as well. Find yourself a red shiny horned bull and uh, make sure he's over level 90. Over level 94, that way the minimum breed will be level 90. So yeah, they'll get the materials. Uh, again, whatever creatures on the left will get bred. They drop into a swimming pool, they drown. Materials float to the top and I take what's left. The reason we want a level 90 plus uh, Wayugu bowl with red shiny horns. What, did I say that right? Wagyu? Something like that. Is the opportunity for the red shiny enchant, which I just picked up. Yeah, red shiny, plus 75 to attack base that. So pretty solid for not too hard of an enchant to collect. Find your abandoned mine so you can make all these nice anti-poison, anti-frost potions. 
probably go to a jungle island. And within this bad boy, you'll find your provisional ingredients. You may also run into the Tyrant Snake, Fior, or the Ancient Golem at the end for the boss. So, good time. This is also where you get all the materials for like your furniture. So this provides us with green ore. Greenstone for making chick furniture as they refer to it. Redstone. You can collect clay in here as well, so do not use cups of water on your sand. That would just be silly. Oh, some things are tricky. This is also where you'll find some limestone. You can get some coal. Uh, they got some other standard ore that you'd find about. Uh, mushrooms and such. Ah, there it is. and provisional ingredients. Nope, that wasn't it. <laughs> and provisional ingredients. Hey, there we go. Or detoxifying mushroom, whatever they want to call it. And boaxite, so you can make the uh, new gear that's like the mechanic stuff, great for magic builds, and the rare metals, so you can make hardened steel and aluminum, and things of that nature. So yeah, come check out the abandoned mine. Drop some pretty neat stuff. So maybe you haven't found your abandoned mine yet to mine some of your provisional ingredients, to mix with some yellow herbs and make an anti-poison. Or maybe you haven't found the blue herbs or whatever for the anti-frost. Or maybe you don't have dragon armor to survive the hell biome yet, but you really want to explore and find some of the neat enchants that lie within these unique biomes. Another opportunity. Hit your magic shield bubble boy over here. You can also grab the weapon, uh, weapon support tool and drag it onto your heart bar. It will have a separate cooldown than the magic shield itself. So both are going to be proportional to your max mana pool. The higher your max mana, the longer the shield will last. This guy you can max out, whereas this one will always be a level one variant so same stats as the first tier here 60 second cooldown 50 mana cost 30 percent shield rate and five percent magic reduction and just like that takes no damage until my shield is gone also i have diver on so i can pick up some cool shit i'll go over that here shortly Ugh. Great opportunity for some interesting enchants. Go to all the biomes and explore what the ponds, lakes, and oceans have to offer. So, go to your skills, hit a reset. You're going to need dolphin swim, maybe endurance, maybe quick pacing, long swim, and diver. So, dolphin swim, long swim, diver. Those are going to get you some very interesting enchants to stack on some gear for some different builds that probably are a little less well known because who goes swimming through random ponds that are poisonous? Or swamps, I should say.
not a poneglyph, but he can make some pretty cool stuff with the World Heritage Pillars. So, find one of these bad boys out in the wild. And you need four to get you started. Once you lay the base, it'll ask for different materials to upgrade it uh, three times to max out your World Heritage. At the moment, we can acquire the Pantheon or a Pyramid. So, find yourself some World Heritage Pillars. Once you grab a World Heritage Pillar for the first time, it'll sink into the ground and then it'll rise up somewhere else on the island. So, there is more than just one. We're off to find the Gomu Gomu no Mi in hopes of achieving rubber. There it is. The Gomu Gomu tree. Monkey D. Luffy. We are here. For rubber. Rubber. Stretchy material obtained from the fruits of the Gomu Gomu tree. When consumed by mouth through thermodynamic entropy, elasticity, you become a rubber man. Well, how about that? 